Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Strategy Podcast, your go-to podcast for everything strategy. Each week, we'll share a new episode covering a wide range of topics designed to help your business grow smarter by making strategy both approachable and actionable. I'm Laura Blackmore, Head of Strategy Execution at Cascade. And I'm Davina Patel, Strategy Execution Director. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our strategy, Ultimate Strategy Podcast. So this is just the beginning, so stay tuned for weekly episodes. Before we dive in, let me thank today's sponsor, Cascade. Now, Cascade is the number one strategy execution platform. Cascade helps turn visions into reality by working as a strategic brain of your business. Mm. Thousands of organizations use Cascade to plan, execute, and track their strategies in one place, improving efficiency and speeding up decision-making. By successfully executing their strategies, Cascade customers are making a difference from deploying life-saving vaccines to engineering the fastest Formula One car. Now, if you want to get your team moving towards your vision in one centralized platform, check out Cascade at cascade.io. We'll leave the link in the show notes and let's get to it. So for today's topic, we are going to be discussing the power of reflection because it is super powerful <laughs> in, in, in what we're trying to do. Now, Regular reflection plays a big role in improving decision-making and also making the right adjustments for your business. And ultimately that leads to more clarity, agility, and alignment in what you're trying to do and achieve, achieve as a, as a company. So the first kind of pillar of reflection is making sure that you learn from past actions and maybe past mistakes. So Laura, I wonder if you have any thoughts on, on that pillar. Definitely. I think learning from past mistakes or regularly reflecting is not done enough in business. I think we're always on this sort of, uh, you know, fast track to uh, constantly, you know, executing our strategy that we actually don't take time to pause and look back uh, and sort of assess what's worked. So I think it's really pivotal. pivotal. I think one uh, one way that reflection really uh, helps is allowing leaders to assess what has worked and what hasn't as well. So looking back at maybe last quarter's or last year's strategic initiatives, what truly worked, what really moved the needle and what can we do more of um, and what hasn't worked? What, what did we sort of waste some time on? Or if we, you know, maybe we didn't waste time on it because we were able to do some things, but it didn't quite work in the way that we wanted or had a slightly different outcome. Uh, than maybe we we wanted as well. So that can really help to really learn from those. I think uh, similar to that is really analyzing the outcomes. So maybe if it didn't impact the revenue in the way that you wanted it, but actually had another impact, you know, maybe it harmed the customer experience or maybe it improved the customer experience. So understanding what tactics really succeeded, what failed uh, can really help make informed choices for the future strategic initiatives. And mm. I think most importantly or, or really importantly is avoiding repeating those same mistakes mm -hmm. uh, or Sorry. repeating sort of, you know, uh, having the same problems occur and occur again. But it also helps identify those approaches that can be scaled. Like I said at the beginning, sort of, you know, if something worked and you want to do more of it and you can do more of it, maybe you, you know, add some more resource or add some more investment, then you can scale that approach and have uh, a really great outcome. What are your thoughts, Davina, on, um, you know, what that can really do for a business when it comes to building that future plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that that take of, of making sure that you don't repeat mistakes, but also understand the recipe for success and, uh, and make sure you, you scale them. So I think it's really important for a business to identify some of the hidden obstacles that you might find. So the reflection portion almost enables your teams to take a step back and critically assess what might be hindering progress. And without this, the issues might not be mitigated and also priorities might not be reassessed. I think understanding your bottlenecks is crucial for strategy execution because there will be bottlenecks, right? I think also this ideal scenario of perfect strategy execution doesn't exist. So you have to be super responsive and reflective to try and tackle some of the things that might go unnoticed. But by revisiting mm. some of these milestones and outcomes, leaders can actually begin to detect patterns that might be occurring as well and identify 
maybe miscommunication that might be happening or blockers that might be happening in your execution journey as well. Um, and I, I think for this, I, I'd like to refer to the Netflix example, Laura, which is a fantastic one. So we know that Netflix started out as a traditional kind of DVD rental business, right? Just like Blockbuster back in the day. Now, one of the things that they were quickly seeing is that being a rental by mail company was slowing down through the consistent reflection in the market trends, also techn technology advancements, customer preferences. They were realizing that actually the mail to service was becoming almost extinct and they needed to identify some of these almost levers that could be could be utilized and tweaked to decide the future of the direction and some of the obstacles that that they were seeing is that actually you know less and less people were buying kind of dvd players or you know video vhs um, um systems as well so netflix identifying that helped them to ultimately pivot their business model and they went from trans, they transitioned to streaming and an online tre streaming service. And this bold move was backed by the reflective analysis and it allowed them to evolve into one of the most dominant streaming forces in the, in the current space. And, you know, there were fast followers after that. We think about Disney plus, we think about, Hey, you and so forth. So definitely a great example of the power of reflection and why it's important to learn from, from past actions. I don't know about you, but I would love the mail service to come back. <laughs> wouldn't that be wouldn't that be amazing if we could, you know, we have to wait until Friday and we get this uh this DVD yeah. in the post, like the that suspense. slower pace of life. Yeah, the build up <laughs> per se for your for your fix. Yeah. Whereas now you can binge binge an entire season in one night if you wanted to. A click of a button. I know. Yeah. Um I think uh one thing I'd love to talk about or or, or add to this is sort of that agility mindset so i think of course uh by netflix constantly having that reflection they were able to be agile and i i do know that the streaming service obviously didn't happen overnight and there was a lot of work that went into that there was a lot of failures of before they actually launched but what they were able to do is be more agile than the blockbusters and the competitors uh that were in the landscape at the time because what they could do is quickly identify you know Hmm, maybe demand is decreasing. What's going on here? You know, how do we adjust based on those market conditions? So it can really create that opportunity to pivot your plans. And I think if Absolutely. you think about a plan without reflection, it's pretty static. And maybe you're only uh, reviewing it on an annual basis, which which hopefully is is not too many uh, organizations doing that. But I think if you have that regular reflection, that agility, that ability to be able to respond it enables you to be able to fine tune the plan before it escalates, before like you know that. maybe the organization uh, goes under. So it can mm -hmm. really help you with that adaptability, um, I think, and that that's super, super important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that, Laura. And I think that relates quite nicely to course correction, right? It's always worth giving things a go when you have that right business case and investment case there, but also recognize the fact that your business may need to change direction it may need to let things go ultimately and pivot pivot the focus another example here that i also use with some of my customers is that amazon tried to release it well they did release a smartphone right and they tried to compete against the apples and the google pixels and samsung's of the world and ultimately they probably did it a little bit too late and without that true kind of vision and a long-term strategy and they ended up pulling the plug on that quite quickly, which whilst they pursued it and it didn't work out, fantastic level of reflection there to say, hey, this isn't working for us. This isn't who we want to be as an organization. Let's let it go. And I think there's also merit in an organization choosing to strategically deprioritize something or remove it from its plan. Like you said, it should never be static. The world is continuously changing around us. So you have to change with it too. So adaptability, course correction kind of all comes into this and, and, and really making sure that your business is armed to meet current challenges and current realities is super important. I love that example uh, from Amazon. Another one uh, that I was thinking of is sort of Adobe when they shifted from perpetual licensing to that subscription model. Mm, you know, they took a big example. risk, but I think they reflected and recognized that changing landscape and how customers were shifting towards maybe 
a more costly service, but something that was, um, you know, on a more of a subscription based model instead. And I think Absolutely. although although it was quite risky for them and it's okay to take risks, it's okay to fail, you know, in the, in the Amazon mm-hmm. example, um, this pivot re- ultimately transformed their revenue model. It, it gave higher customer retention. It gave more consistent revenue streams, uh, more mm-hmm. consistency. Um, they could sort of plan uh, or forecast a little bit better and has ultimately helped them to get to that sustained growth. Um, obviously, now we know Adobe as being the leader in that creative software space um, and they have a thriving subscription base. So I think um, although there are risks that you can take and maybe you don't do pivots or shifts as big as that, obviously now subscription models are very widely uh, widely known. I have tons of subscriptions every month. Yeah, Kind of exactly. drives me crazy. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> we're used to it now. We're all used to that sub- kind of subscription versus perpetual licensing. Um, mm-hmm. So I thought that was a good example. Yeah, fantastic one. And also just a shift in cus- customer preferences, right? And what the end user, whether you are a B2C or a B2B business, it's keeping up with ultimately what your your customers want and and fur and without reflection, you know, you could stay stuck in a in an operating model or offering something that is redundant. So I think a fantastic example. Any final closing thoughts for maybe how you could get started with uh, with using reflection or um yeah, any final closing thoughts do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So I think when I think about reflection, there's all kinds of methods out there that will help you do that, right? And I think a SWOT analysis is one that's super famous and one that we all know. But I think it's important to make sure that you get varied perspectives when you're doing something like a SWOT analysis or you're doing any kind of reflection. Um, self-reflection and self-evaluation is fantastic. However, it's only one opinion and one perspective. So it's important that the power of reflection power of reflection is almost tenfold across your business as much as you can maximize it to make sure that you get the most out of your learnings. Every every team member, every kind of leader will have a different view. So making sure you get that holistic approach is super important. But also embedding that mindset of reflection. I think Toyota is a great example of a business that implemented the kind of well-known Kaizen philosophy, which is all around continuous reflection. Reflection never stops, right? And continuous improvement is something that's super important to to Toyota as a business. And that's at every employee level. So doing that is is crucial for your for your business. Awesome. I love that. I was also going to add in about the the idea of getting lots of opinions from lots of different locations in the business. Like you said, sort of get a wide perspective of opinions. Maybe one person thinks something really worked and somebody else actually saw it as a failure. It's important to understand what those perspectives are and why and what it meant to them um, to get that kind of holistic, holistic view. I think that wraps up today's episode on the power of reflection. Hopefully you found it insightful and it's giving you an opportunity to reflect, uh, but not just reflect on sort of failures, but also celebrate wins as well and uh, and help you on your journey to better strategy execution. Great. And make sure to tune in to next week where we'll be talking about another exciting topic. It's going to be another fantastic episode with practical insights that you won't want to miss. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the Ultimate Strategy Podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Also check out the links to our website that we mentioned at the beginning in the episode description. And a huge thank you to our sponsor Cascade for making this podcast possible. Thank you for listening. And remember that great strategies are only as good as their execution. So take action, make it happen and see the results. See you in the next episode for your weekly dose of strategy. Mm-hmm.